Say you have a PIC microcontroller project that you really like, maybe one from this channel. Now all of these projects have source code that makes sure that the microcontroller is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Now how do you get that source code onto the controller? In this video I'll show you how to do that in five simple steps and I'll also go through some common problems and pitfalls to help you with troubleshooting if something doesn't work on the first try. Let's go. So here on the left is the source code that is written in C and this is our PIC microcontroller here on the bottom right on which we want to transfer the code. We use the MPLAB Integrated Development Environment or IDE for short to write our source code. Then we compile this code into a so called hex file and we will use the XC8 compiler to do that. All of that happens on your computer. Next we need a special device called a programmer that allows us to transfer this hex file from our computer out into the world onto the microcontroller and we will use the PICKIT3 today. And the actual data transfer is managed with a third and final piece of software that is called MPLAB Integrated Programming Environment or IPE for short. I know it sounds like a lot but we'll break it down into smaller pieces in just one second. The good news is that all the software is completely free and you can download and install it right now. The only thing you need to buy is the Picket 3 which is around $25. Okay so let's first install the three pieces of software. The MPLAB IDE, the IPE and the XC8 compiler. I am on Windows for now but they work on Linux and Mac OS just as well. The download links are in the description of this video and also in the companion article on Friendly Wire. Install the MPLAB IDE first and that comes with the MPLAB IPE included automatically. Then install the XC8 compiler. You can use all the default options, there is no need to set up anything fancy. To be safe restart your computer after this so all the drivers can be loaded properly. Now open the MPLAB IDE. Click on File and then on New Project. Select the option Microchip Embedded on the left and Standalone Project on the right and then click on Next. Now we have to select the PIC microcontroller that we are using and here I will just use the PIC 16F627A as an example. But if you are using a different one then of course enter that name here instead. Under Tool first activate the option Show All and then select the PIC Kit 3 in the drop down list. Click on Next. And because we won't talk about debugging today, we can skip this window here entirely and keep none selected before clicking on next again. Now it's time to select our compiler. Select the XC8 compiler from this list here, which is the compiler that we installed a minute ago. Now we can select a name for our project and I will just call it test. And then we need to specify the location of the project folder. Click on finish and our project is all set up and it should now appear in the left part of the MPLAB IDE. But for now it's still an empty project so we need to create the main source file where we will write our C code. To do that right click on source files, select new and then choose main.c. As a file name enter main and then click on finish. What you see here is the bare bones structure of a C program for the PIC 16 f 627 a controller. Now you can either write your own code or copy and paste the code from a website. For all of the tutorials and projects on this channel here, you can always find the full source code at the bottom of the companion article. So as an example, let us use the LED blink source code, our first program ever. When you are copying and pasting code though, make sure that this code is really written for the controller for which we set up the project. In this case, it has to be written for the PIC 16 f 627 a And if you look at the companion article, you actually see, yes, it is. So we're all good to go. Now this code here is written in C and the language C has been designed in a way that it is nice to read for us as humans. But a controller doesn't understand C directly so we need to compile the C code into a set of simple commands that the controller actually understands. We use a compiler to do that and that's why we installed the XC8 compiler. The resulting file is called a hex file and it has that name because its format is in hexadecimal. To create this hex file all we need to do is click this hammer and broom symbol up here. This cleans up all temporary project files and then compiles the source code into the hex file. Depending on the length of the source code this step can take a few seconds but at the end it should say build successful at the bottom prompt here. And this text here tells you where to find the hex file. Go to the project folder that we set up a minute ago, into the dist folder, then default and then production. And there it is, our hex file. 
Okay, now we need to leave our computer and get into the real world. It's time to transfer the hex file onto our PIC microcontroller and we will use the PIC Kit 3 to do that. You can find links to where to buy the PIC Kit 3 in the companion article to this video or in the video description. So here is how the PicKit 3 looks like in real life. It has a USB end that plugs into our computer and on its other side it has a 6 terminal connector to wire it up to our microcontroller. This little triangle here marks pin number 1. Pin 1 is the reset pin. It is also called Master Clear or MCLR for short. Pin 2 is where we connect the positive supply voltage of 5 volt and is also called VDD. Pin 3 is a ground connection and is also called VSS. Pin 4 is the data pin. It also goes under the name Programming Data, PGD or ICSPDAT. I know. Pin 5 is the clock pin. It is also called Programming Clock or PGC for short or ICSPCLK. And pin 6 is the low voltage programming pin or LVP for short, but we don't use it today so let's just ignore it. Take a look at the datasheet of your controller and look for the pinout. Here's an example for the PIC 16 f 627 a VDD and ground are usually easy enough to find and MCLR is also usually easy to identify. PGC and PGD are here and here and keep in mind that sometimes these are called ICSP DAT and ICSP CLK instead. Here are some examples for controllers that I use a lot like the PIC 16 f 1455 and the PIC 16 f 883 If you have any questions where these pins are located, you can also leave a comment down below. And this is how it looks like as a schematic for our PIC 16 f 627 a example. To build this you need a breadboard where you can plug in your controller and then you can use DuPont style connectors to connect all 5 wires from the PIC 3 to your controller. And then, when it's all connected, plug the PIC Kit 3 into your computer on the USB end. Now open the MPLAB IPE which looks like this. The layout in this version 5.5 is slightly different from previous versions that you may have seen in my older videos but the functionality is exactly the same as before. First things first, I like to switch into the so-called advanced mode which you can do by clicking on settings and then on advanced mode. Enter the default password which is microchip, select the option keep me logged in and then click on log in. The window should now look like this and you only have to do this once. Also for some reason the window has a weird aspect ratio to it so I couldn't help myself and just had to make it look a little bit more like this. Anyway, next under device, type in the name of your microcontroller which is the PIC 16 f 627 a in our case and click on apply. Under tool, the PIC Kit 3 should already show up because we plugged it in earlier. Then click on connect so that the MPLAB IPE can establish a connection with the programmer. And if a dialog window like this one here shows up, you can just select do not show this message again and click on OK. But it looks like something went wrong here. That's because we have to tell the PICKIT 3 to send out power as well. To do that, click on the power tab on the left side and under voltage options, select the option power target circuit from PICKIT 3. This way the PIC is powered by the PICKIT 3 during programming, which I find very convenient because we don't need to add an external power supply this way. Click back on the operate window, click on browse in the hex file line, navigate to the hex file that we compiled earlier in step 3 and then click on open. In the prompt at the bottom it should now say hex file loaded successfully. Click on program and now the PICKIT 3 is sending this hex file onto the PIC microcontroller. This process is also called flashing sometimes. The PICKIT 3 has some LEDs that should start blinking at this point to indicate the data transfer. And after a few seconds it should say programming complete in the prompt down here and we are done. At this point the content of the hex file is safely stored on our PIC microcontroller. We can remove it from the breadboard and it is ready to use in our project. Now the first time I tried this it didn't work and even today after having done this hundreds of times it still sometimes doesn't work. So here's a list of 8 common mistakes to look out for and how to fix them. Double check your wiring and if possible use colored wires which makes it a lot easier. I know this kind of sounds obvious but based on my own experience it happens. Make sure you don't have the PIC microcontroller connected upside down. PIC microcontrollers have a notch that tells you where pin 1 is located but sometimes it can be a bit hard to see. Also make sure you know where pin 1 of the PIC Kit 3 is. It's the pin close to the white triangle. Some breadboards can be unreliable so make sure that all contacts are stable. Wiggle the wires a little bit and see if there is a tight connection. If the wires come out very easily chances are the connection is not good. 
The same goes for the fit on the Picket 3 side. Some connectors are a bit too thin and fit very loosely in the Picket 3 connector. If they come out very easily, again, chances are the connection is not so good. Now this is a fun one and the error message that shows up looks like this. Whenever this happens, it means that your USB port where you plugged in the Picket 3 may not have enough power. In this case, it is a good idea to go back into the MPLAB IPE and disable the option power target circuit from Picket 3 and instead use a dedicated power supply. Simply connect it to the VDD and ground connection of the PIC microcontroller and leave the VDD and ground connection to the Picket 3 connected as well, that is important. I find that a simple 4.5 volt battery pack works very well for that. If it still doesn't work at this point, disconnect all external circuitry from your PIC controller. Especially when there are other things connected to the program data, program clock or master clear pins, this can lead to interference that destroys the signal integrity of the programmer so the data transfer doesn't go through completely. And as a last resort, try another chip of the same type. Sometimes the PIC microcontroller itself may just be broken. That's why I always advise people to get at least two, better three of the same microcontroller. This way you cannot just build more amazing projects, you can also use it in a case like this. And here's something very important. If it still doesn't work, or if any of this doesn't make any sense, then please let me know in the comments or reach out to me on social media. But now what are you waiting for? Go find a PIC microcontroller project and give it a go. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.